Number 10. Bleach Injection A nurse managed to kill five of her patients by injecting bleach straight into their dialysis tubes. Her name is Kimberly Science, and she worked at the DaVita Dialysis Center in Lufkin, Texas. Investigators at the time of the murders were trying to figure out why there were so many fatal heart attacks happening, far more than usual. As it turned out, Kimberly was behind it. Kimberly herself was born in 1973 in Massachusetts. She eventually moved to the small town of Lufkin, and then in 2007, started working as a vocational nurse at the center. Before this, she was fired from a handful of other healthcare jobs. She was fired from the Lufkin Hospital after being accused of stealing drugs and faking her urine test. Around the time she started working at the center, her marriage was in a rough patch. Her husband had already filed for divorce and even obtained a restraining order against her. In 2007, she was also arrested for public intoxication, domestic disturbance, and criminal trespassing. By 2008, she was heavily medicating herself for depression. It was around the same time that Kimberly started feeding herself medication that people at the center started dying. They saw a spike in patients suffering from cardiac arrest during dialysis treatment. Medical responders were called to the facility no less than 30 times in a single month, whereas in 15 months prior, they had only been called twice. Clearly, someone was murdering these people. Kimberly was quickly busted. Patients actually witnessed her preparing a bleach solution and then putting it inside a syringe. She was fired from the job quickly arrested by local police and charged with one count of capital murder and five counts of aggregated assault. Number 9. Italy's Angel of Death Daniela Poggiali is known as Italy's Angel of Death. She is also considered to be the worst serial killer nurse in history. The authorities suspected that Daniela had killed upwards of 90 people while working as a nurse. Investigators originally accused her of drip-feeding as many as 38 patients pure potassium chloride, which happens to be the same chemical compound that they use in the United States for lethal injections. That original 38 has since risen to 93, and all over the course of just two years. While the investigators still don't know all the grisly details of these terrible murders, they fear she could have been killing up to three people a day. You're probably wondering how all of this even happened. How does someone kill 90 people without getting busted? According to the police, she wasn't really a prime suspect. She had no mental illness, she wasn't a visible psychopath, and she had no criminal priors. It's believed that the murders were part of a power trip, as Daniela had a god complex and got off on easily murdering people. Naturally, Daniela denied the accusations, but it didn't save her from being sentenced to spend 30 years in prison in 2016. She will likely never see daylight again for her terrible crimes. Number 8. Charles Cullen Charles Cullen is the most notorious serial killer in the history of New Jersey. Back in December of 2003, he told authorities that he had murdered up to 45 patients during the 16 years he had worked at various hospitals throughout New Jersey and Pennsylvania. The first murder was committed on June 11, 1988. A judge had been admitted to the St. Barnabas Medical Center for an allergic reaction. Instead of treating the man, Charles injected him with a lethal overdose of medication. He went on to kill 10 more people at that hospital, including a patient suffering from AIDS, who Charles injected with way too much insulin. He quit his job in 1992 when authorities at the hospital began getting suspicious, but his killing was far from over. He went on to get a job at the Warren Hospital in Phillipsburg. He murdered three old ladies by forcing them to overdose on their medications. His final victim even claimed that a male nurse had injected her with something while she was asleep, but the healthcare workers at the facility dismissed her comments and called her crazy. This went on and on until 2003, when after murdering people at 10 different hospitals, he was finally apprehended by the police. On March 2, 2006, the insane nurse was given 11 consecutive life sentences. He will be eligible for parole in 397 years. Number 7. Stealing Identities A nursing assistant had gotten into some serious trouble for stealing the identities of people she was supposed to be taking care of. 24-year-old Sierra Johnson got busted stealing a woman's wallet at a care facility, then using the information to commit fraud. To make this even worse, the victim is a veteran of World War II, approximately 100 years old at the time of the crime. She had been in Europe, working to process mail sent to the troops. In 2020, she had her wallet stolen from the nursing assistant, and that was when her trouble started. Sierra Johnson used the veteran's identity to lease an apartment and purchase a Chrysler 300. She managed to get away with it by using an app with an age filter to make herself look older. 
thus securing the license for the application on the apartment and the vehicle with a fake selfie. And this was only one of Sierra's victims. Investigators say she stole at least seven different identities while working at different care facilities in Phoenix, Mesa, and Goodyear. The police found stolen cards in her apartment, which ultimately did her in. She's since been arrested, but we don't know exactly how long she'll spend in jail. She's been charged with identity theft, fraud, and forgery. What do you think the punishment should be for a nurse stealing a war veteran's identity? Let us know in the comments, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe button if you haven't already. Number 6. Tennessee Pill Mill Three nurse practitioners in Tennessee were recently arrested and ended up in federal court for prescribing huge quantities of opioids as part of a pill mill. The nurses are Cynthia Clemens, Courtney Newman, and Holly Carmichael Womack. They were at the head of a multi-state pill mill operation that has so far resulted in over 140 convictions. But just what exactly is a pill mill, and how did these women pull it off? By using their status as nurses, they were able to prescribe millions and millions of tablets of drugs worth a whole lot of money on the street. These drugs included oxymorphone, oxycodone, and plain old morphine. They operated out of four different clinics in Tennessee, prescribing the drugs to people already addicted to opioids. Of course, they did this for profit, generating roughly $21 million in revenue. But that was just their revenue, as the street value of the drugs is over $360 million. There were actually more people involved than just the three nurses. One of the people arrested was Sylvia Hofstetter, whom prosecutors described as the largest drug dealer to ever appear in a Tennessee federal courtroom. Men were even extradited from Italy for their roles in the lucrative pill mill scheme. Number 5. Jane Toppin Jane Toppin was born on March 31, 1854. She was arrested 47 years later in 1901 for a slew of terrifying murders. She was actually quoted as telling the authorities that she wanted to accomplish killing more helpless people than anyone else who ever lived. At the time, she confessed to approximately 31 killings, though only 12 of those were ever confirmed. So, who exactly did this crazy lady end up murdering? The murder victims were her patients, and even the family members of her patients. She did the killings while working as a nurse from between 1885 and the time of her arrest. She worked at the Cambridge Hospital, where her co-workers called her Jolly Jane. She was extremely well-liked, her patients never complained, and she was an all-around respected lady. But what nobody knew was that Jane was using her patients as unwilling guinea pigs, performing experiments on them with morphine. She would change how much drug she gave a person to see how their nervous system reacted. It was a warm-up for the bloodbath to come. In 1889, Jane was recommended for a position at the Massachusetts General Hospital. However, she ended up getting fired for recklessly administering opiates. Several of the murders had even taken place there. She opened her own clinic as a private nurse and in 1895 began killing indiscriminately. She murdered her landlord, her foster sister, and a whole heap of elderly people, all by using lethal injection. She had learned how to kill people with injections during these early years at Cambridge Hospital. But Jane got too bold. By killing so many people close to her, the authorities eventually figured out what was happening and took her in. She was charged with the murders, declared insane, and committed for the rest of her life inside the Taunton Insane Hospital. Number 4. The Baby Thief A woman pretending to be a nurse walked into a hospital by herself and strolled out minutes later with a baby. This insane act of fraud and human thievery happened in India in the city of Pune. The woman was identified as 24-year-old Vandana Jeth. The victim was the baby of an unnamed 22-year-old woman who had just gone to the Sassoon General Hospital for treatment. The mother and her baby were sitting in the care ward waiting to see the doctor when a woman wearing a nurse's uniform walked into the room. The nurse told the mother that one of her family members had just arrived to meet her. The nurse then offered to look after the woman's baby while she went and talked to the relative. Not even thinking twice, the mother handed over the infant and walked out of the room. When she returned, the nurse and the baby were gone. Obviously panicked, the woman informed security at the hospital, who contacted the local police station. The police launched an immediate search for the baby, and one of the first things they did was check the hospital surveillance footage. That's when they saw Vendana dressed in the nurse's uniform, walking out of the front doors with the stolen child. They quickly tracked her down, arrested the fake nurse, and reunited the baby with her mother. But what makes this story really crazy is that no motive has been given yet for why Vendana pretended to be a nurse just to steal a person's baby. The best that the police can put together is that she's unable to have her own, 
so she thought she'd just stroll into the hospital and get one. Number 3. Fentanyl Thief In Connecticut, a nurse got into serious trouble for stealing fentanyl from patients who were undergoing surgeries. She would steal the drug, then substitute it with a saline solution. Her name is Donna Monacone, and she was recently given three months of home confinement, four weekends in prison, and three years of supervision. Donna was working at the Yale Reproductive Endocrinology and Infertility Clinic when she developed her problem. Most of her patients she was dealing with were receiving fertility treatments. Part of the treatment involved fentanyl being delivered in an IV so that the patients didn't feel any pain during the procedure. Unfortunately for the patients, they all felt incredible pain. Donna swapped out the pain-relieving fentanyl for saline, then used the fentanyl to get herself high. She was horribly addicted to the stuff, and it all started after she and her husband got divorced. To make matters worse, the woman who got robbed of their fentanyl were treated like drug addicts by their doctors, who then complained that fentanyl wasn't working. They were going into surgeries with absolutely no pain medication, then being ridiculed when they complained that it hurt too much. Luckily, enough women complained that the doctors eventually figured out something was wrong, and they tracked it back to Donna. She has since had her license revoked and her place firmly secured in hell. Number 2. Killer Nurse Janine Jones pled guilty to the death of Joshua Earl Sawyer, an 11-month-old baby who died in December of 1981. She pled guilty on the condition that the other four charges of baby killing were dropped. These horrific murders go back to the 1970s, when Janine Jones worked as a nurse in Texas. And before we go any further, it's important to understand that she didn't just kill five babies. She's been accused of causing the deaths of up to 60 infants and young kids while working as a vocational nurse over almost two decades. She was finally caught in 1984 for injecting babies with certain chemicals to kill them. It was 15-month-old Chalisa McClellan that she was caught murdering, gaining her a prison sentence of 99 years. The most recent conviction of Joshua Sawyer came in 2017 to prevent Janine from being released due to a Texas law designed to prevent prison overcrowding. She was supposed to be released mandatorily in 2018, but the newest murder charge put her away for the rest of her life. As for why she did it, she claimed that it was all to stimulate a special pediatric intensive care unit in the city of Kerrville where she worked. She thought that if enough babies died, they'd have to create a new intensive care unit for kids. In her twisted mind, she actually thought she was doing the right thing. And number one, the OnlyFans nurse. Allie Ray was a hardworking nurse whose situation changed dramatically in September of 2020. She had been working brutal 14-hour days in the intensive care unit for barely any money until the COVID-19 pandemic happened. With the lockdown, things changed. She found herself selling risque pictures of herself online to help pay the bills. What she hadn't expected when she started posting the pictures was that she'd make a fortune. In the first month, she made almost double what she was making as a nurse, and she got good at selling herself. She ended up making $75,000 a month with OnlyFans. But it wasn't long until jealous colleagues uncovered what she was doing. When her coworkers came across her profile, they sent it along to her boss. Her boss then gave her an ultimatum. She could either quit posting lewd pictures of herself on the internet and keep her job, or she was fired. Allie chose to be fired, and she's now 37 years old and making almost $100,000 a month, and she doesn't have to step foot inside a hospital. How do you feel about a nurse being fired for OnlyFans? Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and thanks for watching. If you haven't already, be sure to hit subscribe before you go. See you next time.